Hi everyone and welcome back to Wondering Wild. I'm so glad you could join me for today, a Wild Wednesday. And today we're going to be talking about the cute little blue fish known as Dory, the royal blue tang. Now, Dory is what most people refer to as a blue tang. However, a blue tang is just the common name for a whole group of species called surgeon fish. A more accurate name for the species of fish that Dory is, is Paracanthus hepatus. But that's a bit of a mouthful, so instead we're going to call it by a more specific common name, royal blue tang. Now, royal blue tangs are found in many places along the globe, from New York to Japan to the Indian Ocean. However, they're not really common anywhere, but they're more likely going to be found in reefs such as the Great Barrier Reef. Blue tangs can get to be 12 inches long, but they're flat like a pancake. Now, when they're mature, you get that quintessential dory coloration where they're dark, deep blue with a yellow tail and black palette markings on their side. However, unlike the movie Finding Dory, where the young Dory looks exactly like her adult version, in actuality, juvenile blue tangs look quite different from the adults. They have almost a completely yellow body with some blue dots around their eyes and blue tips to their fins. As they grow older, the blue will become deeper and darker and they're going to get that quintessential coloration that is seen in most adults. Now, as I said earlier, blue tang belong to a family of fish called the surgeon fish. Now, they got this name from the spines that are found along their caudal fins. These spines resemble a surgeon's scalpel. These are used for defense. So, if they're caught by a fisherman or if a predator attacks, they can expose these spines and cause a lot of damage. Now, these spines are more than just used for defense. Males will also use them when they're aggressive towards each other and when competing for a mate to have sword fights, as they're called, where they fight with these spines on their sides. Now, royal blue tanks play a very important role in the ecosystem. They feed on the excess algae found on the coral within the reef. So by keeping the coral clean, not only are they keeping their homes clean, they're keeping the coral healthy. Now this is very important because coral is over one-third all the ocean species, even though it only covers 1% of Earth. These fish will hang out in small schools of about 10 to 12, and it's not just going to be royal blue tang, it could include several other species of surgeon fish as well. Now, blue tangs are a very popular aquarium fish. However, they're also one of the more delicate aquarium fish. They're not very easy to care for. They require very specific food needs and they tend to get diseases of the lateral line, which is very important to fish for navigation. And I just kind of want to take a moment and talk about aquarium fish and pets in general, especially when related to movies such as the Royal Blue Tang is to Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. So whenever we see movies like that, even like um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies and things like that, we get really excited and we say these are beautiful fish, these are cool turtles, I really want one. And we all know that pets, really they take a lot of responsibility, like a cat or a dog or a hamster even, or a goldfish. But it's important to remember that what you see in a movie isn't always going to be what you get in a pet. So yes, we all love Dory and we all love Nemo and Marlin, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we need to go out and get a clownfish or a blue tang or even a turtle. Because then we have to care for these animals and they can be very complicated. Clownfish and royal blue tangs need a saltwater ecosystem and they get very large, so they're going to require a very large aquarium. So it's just always good to remember that when you see something on a movie or on TV, that though it's really cute and you may really want one, do your research thoroughly. Make sure you understand everything that getting a pet entails so that you can give it the best care possible. Because maybe having a saltwater aquarium is something that would be great for you and you do a great job. I'm not saying that no one should ever own a blue tang. 
but it's just important that we put in our research and we put in the time to make sure that when we do have our pets, we give them the best home possible. All right, I'm gonna get down off my soapbox now. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Wild Wednesday, where we talked about the Royal Blue Tang, also known as Dory. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And as always, if you like what you saw here today, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, stay wild and never stop wondering.